Ramsey. He's working hard downstairs, and he puts it in off the glass. Notre Dame starts the scoring tonight. Great footwork, great footwork inside. And if you're a big, that's something you really want to have is great footwork, great balance as you get banged around in there, you don't travel. Nate Leshetsky, leading scorer on this Irish team, averaging 15 points a contest. And the three ball goes on the other end for Britton Watts. Hey, Britton Watts, a local product. Quick fire, just missed by Dane Goodwin. Watts played for Culver Academy right here close to, to Notre Dame. Watts with a lot of family in attendance tonight. As you mentioned, just about a 40 minute drive south. Played high school ball at Culver's Academy. This is his first collegiate game back in the state of Indiana, so he wants to make this one count for sure. And on the other end, Cormac Ryan drains it. He stays hot. He's had a great run here lately. The ball seems to just find the net. Ryan, 14 points last outing against Syracuse, and then the matchup prior, the big 23-point outing against Michigan State, where he absolutely lit up the floor from deep. Mashevsky goes up to grab the board. Ryan uses that screen, takes another jumper. And on the other end, Watts wants to push the tempo. Backs it out, gives it off to Fletcher Tinnen. Very important, Boston does not let the ball stick. They've got to continue to move the Irish defense. Chemezi on the block, posted up against Leshetsky. He's got four left, has to force it off the glass, and it rolls out. Board is secured by Leshetsky. Looks like Boston U really wants to try to push it a little bit more against the Irish, trying to wear down these five or six guys that play a lot of minutes. Notre Dame, a team not with a lot of depth, will only go about seven deep, and that's with the recent addition of Marcus Tamman, who finally got healthy last game against Syracuse and made his season debut, but before that, they were only going about six deep. Goodwin working hard underneath, and it looks like it'll stay with Notre Dame. Early on from this one, Notre Dame has a one-point lead here. As we welcome you back, we take a look at head coach Joe Jones, now in his 12th season with the BU program, number two all-time in yes. wins at BU. He's done a great job. What a great competitor he is. He's a perfect fit for this institution. And, you know, he's done an incredible job getting this team in the postseason play, being able to be consistent, get those 20 wins. Uh, really uh, well-respected, especially in the league. Led the Terriers to 22 wins a season ago and is poised for even a bigger season this year after they were picked to finish number two in the preseason poll in the Patriot League. Meanwhile, Cormac Ryan picks up where he left off with a triple. Great kick out by his teammate, Nate Wyszewski Ray found him on the perimeter, uh, got a great look and knocked it in. Ryan averaging just over 12 points a game, and he's been shooting the three ball crazy as of late. And on the defensive end, Notre Dame with a big block underneath. Mac Ryan has a great instinct to block shots. He's very long. Goodwin looks to bulldoze White inside. Instead, he'll go fade away. Nevin Zink was in search of Walter White, cutting under the basket, but the two miscommunicated. You know, just being able to work together as a team. Coach Bray talks so much about don't let the ball stick, and there's just a great kick out. If he gets a great look right now, it just in his mindset, he's gonna make it. And we've seen that the last few games where he just has a lot of confidence from that three-point line. Ryan been shooting the lights out of the ball as of late. 11 of his 16 last three-point attempts have gone. And Trey Wirtz finds himself in an interesting situation. That one won't count as we take a look at head coach Mike Bray in his 23rd season at the helm of this program. And ah. he's got a squad that's his most experienced ever this year. It is, it's amazing that the age of his players, and it tells a lot about him as a coach, that they want to stick around, they want to play for him, and they, they've all come back to win for him and get back in this tournament. Notre Dame's coming off a 24-win season 
and made their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2017. Fell in the round of 32 in a close contest, but won two matchups, one in the first four and then one in the round of 64. And this year with all the returners, you gotta think they're poised for more. And it, when you shoot like that, it's gonna be a long day for yes. Boston University. Cormac Ryan continues his hot streak and timeout BU. He shot that one from Granger. Cormac Ryan. There's Cormac Ryan, already eight points in this contest and two threes. He has Notre Dame on an 8-0 scoring run. You know, when you get a young a player, especially like Cormac Ryan, that just has a feel, now every time he lets it go, it's just he's got to think it's going in. And, and in reality, it has here lately. Miles Brewster checked into the game, dishes it off to Harper in the corner. Down on the block, Zink has it, and his pass is picked off by Trey Wirtz. Wirtz tries to use the screen from Alan Lubin. Instead, Marcus Hammond has it. His second game back in an Irish jersey. Takes a shot from the corner. Coach Hammond Sprague. was out early this season, but made his season debut against Syracuse. Played yeah. 19 minutes and had six yeah. points. And you know, that's exactly what Coach Bray is trying to do, is get these younger guys in the game early. And uh, it's a breath of fresh air to get a rotation of seven where coach feels a lot more comfortable. Nevin Zink, the senior from Newtown, Connecticut with the basket on the other end to stop the scoring run for Notre Dame. Brewster has it, gives it back to Zink who tries to make a move on Ben Allen Lubin, but he's hit with a foul. Yeah, he hooked, hooked him with that arm. You know, that's an automatic call today by the referees. You gotta be able to make sure you stay square and not hook, hook the defender. Good call by the official. And some early substitutions from Notre Dame. We've seen Ben Allen Lubin check in, Marcus Hammond also on the floor. Yes, I don't think we've seen this group together all year. Wirtz guarded closely by Brewster, gives it inside to the freshman, Van Allen Lubin, who kicks out Goodwin, has a three on the way, and the board is pulled down by Brewster. The Irish have had two really good looks at the three. Morales dishes inside the zinc and it's blocked from behind by Van Allen Lubin. You know what, the thing that uh, the Irish have really tried to focus in on, they lost a tough game of Syracuse, but they have not been healthy. This is an opportunity where, again, you get beat on the backside, but you have the athleticism and the block the shot and uh, erase what would have been an easy two points. Well, Lubin's a freshman, but in recent games has really seen an uptick in minutes, has three double-digit scoring performances in his last four games. And, you know, he played early with a mask, and that really is tough as, a, as an athlete. And it, you can tell he's just being a little more confident without the mask on. Three from the corner from Nick Nobili comes up short. Words drives inside, makes a move, and he finishes it off. That was a concern as we talked to coach before the game, is not allowing the Irish to drive on a straight line to the rim. And there was an example where Wirtz was able to take it right to the rim. Anthony Morales pulls the trigger from deep and has got it. That was a good looking shot by 22. He just came out there, squared up and let it fly. Morales with seven points off the bench the other day in the win over Mary Mack. Double ball screen here. Wirtz uses that ball screen. Lubin has it from the top of the key, and he'll take that free throw line jumper with ease. We're watching a freshman just grow up right in front of our eyes, where he feels so comfortable. The game is slowed down for him. You can just tell he's a lot more poised on the offensive end. Well, Mike Bray describes Lubin as a positionless basketball player. As on the other end, Brewster to the rack and lays it in off the glass. He's just got a great knack and a great feel that he can guard one through four very, very easily. And sometimes he was the post player. He's had to play post defense a lot. Hammond looks to drive inside, has his pocket picked by Brewster. Morales thought about for a second. Instead, finds the big man Zink inside who gets an easy two. Great transition offense by Boston University there allowed a big to, to post up against a guard, which is an easy two for Boston U. Well, 
Wirtz has it. Being guarded by Zink. A bit of a bit of a mismatch. Guard on big man. Great Inside, fight. Lubin has it, goes up top strong and is fouled from behind. Just about 10 minutes into this contest, Notre Dame a two-point advantage over... Ah! Welcome back to Purcell Pavilion. And Coach, these are two of the most experienced rosters in the country. Have veteran leadership all over the floor. You know, so that's a great thing if you're a head coach, you got to look at that. Look at this. this is like a pickup game at the YMCA. I mean, the average age is about 24, which is great for both teams, both programs. No, you don't see that every day. And this <laughs> is actually Mike Bray's most veteran team ever. Those six grad students, they're the most of any Power 5 program out there. Well, the thing, I like it as an educator. He's the master educator. They're graduating from Notre Dame with their degree, and many of them have moved on with their master's degree. Uh, what a credit to the, to the Notre Dame program. Well, here's the young gun at the free throw line, and he sinks a pair of them to give Notre Dame a 16 to 12 lead just over nine minutes into this first half. Boston University talked a lot about trying to get the ball to the middle of the floor against the Irish and then attacking them. Tynan swings it over to Harper, being guarded by Starling, who used the screen from Chemezi. In the corner, White has it. Fakes the shot, gets by Goodwin, dishes it back out. Eight left on the timer. White drives, goes to the left hand, and a beautiful finish for Walter White. Wow, there's what you see. Someone who's got a lot of experience. Sixth year at BU, and that was a great shot over great defense. White took his medical red shirt in 2018 to 2019, and then he added in the extra COVID year, and he's in his sixth season here at BU. He's a preseason All-Patriot League selection, and it's warranted. He's the leading scorer and leading rebounder on this team this season. And there's the freshman from the wing, J.J. Starling, sinks the triple. Irish now back into, looks like their 2-3 matchup here for the first time tonight. And that's a big three for Starling. Yes. He's been struggling shooting as of late. One of his last 16 three-point attempts fell coming into this contest. That's true. One of the things that might turn it right back over, which is unusual. Turnover leads from a corner three from White. Chemezi was battling with Ryan for the board, and Notre Dame will win it. Yeah, I think one of the things that transition for any freshman, shooting that three-point, the game is just so much faster. You have to work so much harder on both ends of the floor. The shot's been a little bit flat. You can tell he had a little lift on that shot. And if he starts knocking down the three, that's going to be really, really tough to defend him. There's no question the talent is there from Starling as he goes to the hoop and is fouled by the grad student Jonas Harper. That's a great example right there. You have to go out and guard him. You don't close out very well. Then he doesn't take the shot. Then he attacks the basket, which as you're watching as a young player, you got to have more than one skill set. you got to be able to shoot it and drive it, and that's what this youngster does so well. Starling is a five-star recruit. He was ranked number 19 in the country by ESPN. That's the highest-ranked recruit in Notre Dame program history. Again, played his... Basketball right over here at the Fort Lauderdale. So the Irish staff got to build a great relationship with him, being right there in his backyard. Not to mention Starling, the first McDonald's All-American at Notre Dame since Demetrius Jackson back in 2013. An excellent player during some really good basketball years Mike Bray had here. Yes. Another local talent, Demetrius Jackson from Mishawaka Marion. Well, here's the other Indiana native, Watts. White nearly had it poked away by Ryan. The zone has really stymied BU right now. BU's got to move. Harper forces it from deep. Tynan poked it out. But now Notre Dame's on the run. Ryan, another three. Heat check, and he's got it. Wow. Great find by J.J. Starling there. Great communication, being able to see the floor being able to find the open man. And if you want to find an open man, you got to be looking for number five in the white. Cormac Ryan already in double digits, 11 points on three deep balls. Lashetsky secures another rebound. Ryan has possession guarded closely, so he gives it off to Starling, 
who misfires. Offensive rebound from Malcolm Chemezi. He gets it back, working up against Leshetsky. A few ball fakes, finally gets it off, but can't convert. The one thing that you want your post defenders to do is wall up. And Nick Leshetsky did exactly that. He just stayed on the shoulder, hands high, didn't jump, didn't leave his feet. Made it very, very difficult to shoot over him. Ryan looking to get a shot off. Instead, he drives and kicks to Dane Goodwin in the corner. And Goodwin buries it. When Notre Dame attacks and kicks, they're one of the best teams in the ACC. Dane Goodwin shooting it at over 50% from deep, and that's the reason why. He can make it when he takes it. Really good shot selection from Goodwin all season long, but on the other end, the counter punch comes back from Britton Watts. Britton Watts says, I can do that too, and had another good look, and sent, made two wide open threes. Thing that Notre Dame does so well is find the open man. Beautiful finish inside from Starling. And you can just see how his confidence has grown. He's been given the ball. He's the quarterback of this team. And you can just see as a freshman, he's got more and more confidence each and every night out. Starling now up to seven points so far in this first half. Watts trying to cut this lead a little bit. Notre Dame on a 13 to 3 1. And Starling charging towards the basket. I got it, I got it, I got it. Pace has been up and down. And again, I think the Irish would like to kind of slow her back down and run a little time and run her offensive sets and really make Boston you guard them. So far, Boston University only 3 of 11 from downtown. Meanwhile, Notre Dame, five of nine. Nice curl cut. That's a good one shot, but just didn't drop. Notre Dame has played really solid defense here the last five minutes. Boston University's only hit one of their eight last field goals, but Walter White will change that trend with a bucket inside. Irish a little bit winded, you can tell. This has been a long stretch here with not the ball, really hasn't stopped very often, no very fouls, and so Irish needs to get to the rim. Leshetsky drives baseline and finishes, finishes it nicely with a beautiful little floater from yeah. Nate Leshetsky. Well, he can do a lot of things well, you know, and that was the concern for Boston University staff is how they're going to handle him because he's not a true post player, so it's really hard for a a five man to guard him because he's outside a lot looking to shoot threes and now he can put the ball on the floor as well. Britton Watts only needs one hand to finish that basket off. How excited is he to be back in Indiana playing and he, he's, he's got uh, his entire family, uh, community, everybody wanted to come back and see him since he has not played here in Indiana since leaving to go to BU. And he's putting on a good show so far, eight points on three of six shooting. Starling, step back jumper. Both teams playing up and down the court, haven't had a break in a while. Fletcher Tynan drives inside on Goodwin. His fadeaway is left short. I think Goodwin got a bit of a piece. And finally, a timeout comes from Notre Dame and Mike Bray. Notre Dame has a 10 point advantage over Boston University. They're shooting the ball well. So far tonight. So far tonight, it's been Cormac Ryan with the hot hand. 11 points on the night, and coach, he's just been on a tear as of late. Oh my goodness! You know, if you look at his stats, you look, look, look at the three point. That's not free throw percentage. That's three point shooting percentage. And the thing about Ryan, Cormac Ryan, is that he's not just living off the three. He loves to attack and, and take that mid-range jumper as well. Video game-like numbers these past three games for the New York native. He has Notre Dame with a 10-point advantage as we get a whistle and the ball will be headed the other way and we'll send. 
as we welcome you back. We talked about how much of an experienced team there is, and there's the numbers to back it up, Coach. Four a thousand point scores on this roster. Yeah, you know, you look at uh, experience, and experience happens to be the the formula for success. And if you have experience, it just covers up for so many things. And you have multiple guys can score on the floor, and you talk to opponents that are playing Notre Dame, they talk a lot about. There's so many guys that can score different ways, and that makes it so hard to defend them. Cormac Ryan looking to join that list. He's just under 900 career points so far. And he's off to a good start tonight to meet at 11 <laughs> points as well. Three from the corner falls for Anthony Morales. That's a good sign. If he's hitting threes, that's gonna really open up the inside part of the game for Boston University. Goodwin uses the screen from Lubin, gives it off to Leshetsky. Great switch out there by Boston defensively. Notre Dame has three to work with on the shot clock. Leshetsky has it underneath, throws it off the glass, up and in, count it. And he's got a wow. chance for one more at the line. And knowing how much time he had on the clock, that is precious. If you look at it, he knows he's got to put up the shot. He's going to go draw the foul. Then he has the, the touch that it takes to go up high off the backboard. Big shot by the senior. Nate Leshetsky has been having his best season to date. Came into this contest averaging 15 points a game to lead all scores on Notre Dame. And he's doing this. He's coming off his worst output of the season last game against Syracuse. Only had two points. Yeah. And so far already surpassing that tonight with seven. Yeah, the 2-3 zone to the length of Syracuse was very difficult for him to deal with. He just didn't get too many opportunities. Not to mention eight rebounds tonight already for Leshetsky. But he's beat underneath that time by Nevin Zink. Man, Zink is a strong load. He doesn't look like but He is very strong. Uh, got wide physical, took it strong to the basket, scored. Thrown up top to Dane Goodwin underneath. Those are things that uh, Dane Goodwin really likes to do. He not only just settles for a three, he can post up his great post-entry pass, but better defense by Boston University there. We take yeah, a look, a bas look yeah. at that basket from Zink. Look how wide and strong, and then using that left hand and touch around the basket is so important for a big. When you have to play physical inside, you also have to have a great touch at the rim. Nevin Zink transferred in last season from South Carolina Upstate, and his season ended in the sixth game. He had an injury that set him back a little yeah. bit, but this season he's come back stronger than ever. He's been a starter in every game, and he's been averaging just under six points at about five rebounds per contest. Yeah, he's put together. He is a strong young man. Jones has it on the last second shot attempt, but it doesn't go. Rebound to Trey Wirtz. Irish right into their motion offense. A lot of cutting, slip screens. Boston really pushing the ball up the floor. Foul underneath by Nate Leshetsky. Yeah, it's a battle down there between the two postmen. I mean, Nate Leshetsky is trying to fight him off, but uh, you can really see that Zink has a great, he's got the ball right where he wants, right dead in the middle. It's hard to defend a guy when he gets the ball right in the middle of the lane. Well, there's no doubt that <laughs> Zink is the big man on this team. He has 20 offensive rebounds yes. entering tonight. Hasn't made an impact on the offensive glass yet, but that'll be coming as his pass is tipped away by Lubin. Hammond has it and he wants to run, dishes it back to Lubin who found him down the floor and a foul will come. You know, I think that's just a great hustle. Zink gets blocked at one end, but he doesn't pout about it. As a coach, you want to see how you handle that. He sprinted back and got a block at the other end. So many times when somebody makes a mistake, you're really looking as a coach to see how you're going to handle that mistake. Sprint back and get back in the game. So blocked out of bounds by BU. From the baseline, good win, a quick jumper. 
Notre Dame is so good on their out-of-bounds plays, and Boston University worked on that today, but they still were able to execute and get a great look. Diving at the midline is Nevin Zink, and he retains possession for his team. Britton Watts goes to the hoop, puts it up, and will be fouled by Van Allen Lubin, so he'll be heading to the charity stripe for two. Boy, he has had a great first half. He's got to feel good about his game with so many of his fan and family right here uh, watching here in South Bend. His entire high school team, I believe, is here watching the game as well. Coach Mark Galloway and his team came to, to cheer on a former alumni. Watts drains the first, and he's been having a fantastic season. Double digits three times this season for Ethan Britton Watts. He only had four times double digits over the previous three seasons combined. Right, and that's a good, again, we're talking about a, a team that's older, and he's part of that group that's older and mature, knows exactly what they need to do, and they're really excited. They're pre predicted second in the conference this year, but they feel they can win it all. Watts hits both, and now he's in double digits tonight with 10. These last two possessions are gonna be a key for both teams as we go to half. Game clock, shot clock difference at about seven seconds. Ryan gets the handoff, kicks it over to Starling. Now Wirtz has it, uses the screen from Leshetsky. Matched up against Nevin Zink now. Gonna have to go. Four on the shot clock, Ryan has it. Working up against Brewster, Brewster tipped it away. Ryan has to force it last minute. Tried to get it up, but it came up short and that'll be a beautiful defensive possession for the, for the Terriers. Absolutely great defense. And again, that's what you want going into it. You don't want to give momentum to the opponent right before half. And that's a great way to stop it by playing great defense. Now they have a chance to knock one in here in the last seven seconds. Brewster picks it up, uses the screen from Zink. He'll go straight to the basket, puts it up, and a whistle comes. Looks like it'll be another foul against Lubin. Great finish here by Boston University right before half. You want to have some momentum going into halftime, and you get a great stop, and now you got an opportunity to cut that lead. Second foul tonight against Lubin. Brewster hits the first, and he has three points on the night. People have been making their free throws in this game, too, which is also a key part of an older team. You just find that the, they feel comfortable going to the line. Let's see what the Irish do with those last three, three seconds to see if they can get a, a good shot up in the three seconds. Plenty of time. Goodwin has the rebound. Doesn't have much time to go. We'll have to keep it up from deep. Looks like he didn't even get it off in time at. The halftime break, it'll be Notre Dame with a 36 to 29 lead over the Terriers from Purcell Pavilion. Stay tuned, first half highlights coming up soon after this. Frisch possess a 36 to 29 lead over the Boston University Terriers from Purcell Pavilion. It's been a great one so far as we welcome you back courtside inside Purcell. Patch Carter alongside Coach Mike Lightfoot, thanks for staying with us. And Coach, a great first half. Notre Dame was up by as many as 13 at one point. Now it's been cut to seven at halftime. You know, it's a great example of what we talked about at the beginning of the game. Veteran players don't flinch, and that's exactly what Boston University did in this game. They kept playing tough, and both teams played solid. I, I like the flow of the game because we had a lot of good things happening. Inside moves here. Nate Lachesk going over that left shoulder, which he loves. He's solid in that. And again, there's a local guy knocking down the three. He had a great first half. But both teams played really, really solid uh, inside and outside. Cormac Ryan loves the mid shot. We talked so much about him finding the net here. And again, inside, Zink going inside, going over his left shoulder. And again, we had a little bit of a block party, both teams. Look at this, a block. And then you see down at the other end, you see another block inside. So both teams have played really solid. They haven't turned the ball over very much. And again, we talked so much about getting the ball inside. And again, here's a great up and under on the foul and getting the hands on. But it's been a great first half. 
and you've seen really great play by both teams. And Boston, you really did a good job closing out the half and getting it to seven points. No doubt. It's been an exciting first half. You can see some of the storylines. Cormac Ryan leading all scores of 11 points, and then Britton Watts right behind him yeah. with 10 points. But the three ball for Notre Dame playing a role early. They're 5 of 10 in that first half. And uh, you talk to the Irish, you talk to Coach Bray, he always says that the magic number is making at least 10 threes, and so they're right on target with that. They only have very few turnovers and are making their free throws. That's exactly kind of the stamp that Coach Bray puts on every team here at Notre Dame. Stick with us. More is coming up from Percent. Well, it's been quite the road trip for the Boston University Terriers. They're on their sixth game of a seven-game road wow. trip that kicked off all the way back on November 20th. It'll be ending this Saturday coming up at Marist. And hats off to the team, you know, traveling, being here in the Midwest, being all over the place, being up at Marquette. That takes a lot out of the team. That takes a lot out of the team. But they've been able to handle it, fight through it, and uh, that's the mental toughness it takes as you have an older team to get through such a long road trip. This is a BU team with a five and four record. They started the season four and one, dropped three straight games at the Cream City Classic in Milwaukee, and then got a big bounce back victory last Friday night against Mary Mack. They'll have the ball to start as White loses possession. Looked to be tipped, so he regains it, brings it up, has 10 to work with on the shot clock, gives it off to Watts. Now Watts is matched up with Ryan, he'll pull it. And a beautiful shot over Cormac Ryan. Ethan Britton Watts is hot so yeah, far. Yeah, that was great defense, but better offense. Watts, 13 points, that's a season high for him already. He likes the Indiana air. I think he's breathed a lot of it his whole career. You know, that's something you want to see. There's a great steal by Watts. Watts climbs the ladder to take it away, and now on the other end, he gives it off to Tynan. Watts once more. Bottom of the net, bingo. Ethan Britton Watts is hot. And Notre wow. Dame is only up one now. Boston University, a strong start to the second half. He's feeling good about what they're doing, and they've come out really strong and focused here in the first three possessions. Starlin trying to change the fortune, and he does that, lays it off the glass nicely. Let's see if they go back to something else. It looks like they're going right to their zone to try to find you know, Britton Watts and see if they can uh, make sure that he doesn't get an easy look right here in this possession. There's only been two lead changes tonight. Notre Dame has led by as many as 13. Fletcher Tynan drains the free throw line jumper. Great start by the Terriers. Great offensive movement, great looks, and great shots. Tynan's first basket of the night. Good win. Hands it off to Wirtz. Now over to Ryan, who used the screen from Leshetsky. Kicks it back out to Nate. Great closeout defense by Boston. Starling matched up against Tynan. Fade away from Starling. Kind of lost it on the way going up, which made it difficult at the shot, a lot tougher. Inside opportunity right here. Got a big on a guard. Walter White with a big time three, and Boston University now has the lead. They're up by two. What a great start. Again, we haven't heard White very much, and that's got to be a concern for the Irish because they've been doing it without him scoring very much. Now Walter White only with four points in that first half, and his partner in crime, Jonas Harper, was kept scoreless. Yes. Underneath a foul against Britton Watts as he was matched up against the taller Nate Leshetsky. And my goodness, Ethan Britton Watts. Yes. What a well, start to the second half. Well, you know what? We, it, you got to be excited for him. He's playing at home. He's got everybody back home here to the games, and so he's really stepped up. And many times that doesn't happen when you're playing back home, but he has really played outstanding at both ends of the floor. Good win with the ball fake. Gets by White, now is met by Zink. Late shot is drained from Cormac Ryan. That's unbelievable. He didn't even have a chance to even look at the rim before he fired that one up. That was nothing but net. Fourth three-pointer of the night for Ryan. Harper on the other end, can't get it to go. Ryan with the board, looking to push the tempo. Dishes it off to Trey Wirtz, who tries his luck from the wing. And Notre Dame, easy offense with six straight points. Woo! Now we got threes going to both ends. 
All right, Notre Dame back on top with a four-point advantage. You see it on your screen. Seven of 12 from behind the arc for Notre Dame. That's been a big key to their game, not just tonight, but yeah. all season long. Yeah, the magic number has been 10 at least. They've got to make that. Definitely on track for that. The hats off to Boston University. Ryan gets a hand on it. Has it on the other end. Will back it out. Wise decision. One more three on the way, and why not? Trey Wirtz with the trifecta. Notre wow. Dame back up to a seven-point lead. That has been a quick explosion by the Irish, and again, Cormac Ryan doing a great job of getting a deflection and didn't force anything, kicked it back out to his teammate for an open three. 9-0 run for the Irish, has them back up by seven. BU looking to put an end. Zink has it underneath, goes towards that left hand and finishes it off. Wow, a great look, a great post up, impressive move off that left hand jump hook. Nevin Zink, eight points on the night. He's been a big reason why BU outscored Notre Dame 12 to six inside, but Nate Leshetsky can get it done on the other end as well in the paint. So hard to guard Leshetsky when he comes off that slip screen. It was a great pass, almost looked like a shot. Came right back, ooh, that's a charge. And the charge comes, some good defense from three times captain Cormac Ryan. And we'll send this one to break. Four minutes into the second half. Notre Dame is up 49. Oh, second half for you. Goodness. Six threes made total already just about four and a half into the second half. I think half. we're going to have changed the nets. They are ripping the nets. They're knocking down shots. It's been fun on both ends of the floor because both teams are just coming out of the second half on fire. The latest two three is courtesy of Trey Wirtz, and it has Notre Dame back up to a seven-point lead. And a lot of times when you see people hitting threes, they look at the shot, but they don't look at the setup. Who made a great pass? And there's been a lot of great passes that have set up everything for good looks on both ends. You see the numbers on your screen. Three of three from behind the arc for both sides in this second half. Wirtz drives baseline, gets past Brewster, and one for Trey Wirtz. Wow, he has really been something special for Notre Dame. You know, when the injuries came about, you have to go to your veteran, and he has really stepped up here. He's looking like he's going to drive opposite, then he just turns and goes right to the rim and gets bumped on the finish. Uh, it's been, again, a punch-out game. One team takes a punch, the other one comes back with a counter punch. And right now the Irish are back to 10 point lead. Trey Words in double digits and it's been quite a step up in scoring yes. this season for Trey Words. He's been averaging 10.6 points per game. Last year when he was mainly coming off the bench, he was only averaging four. Oh yeah, he's really stepped up. That's exactly, come back to Ryan with a great steal. Ryan, some tremendous defense. Has to slow it down. Five steals on the night so far for the Irish. Again, the ball is moving. When that's happening, good things are happening for the Irish. Goodwin drives, looks to kick to Starling, has it tipped away by Watts. Out of bounds here, and again, Notre Dame's had a lot of success in out of bounds plays. They do so many great things. They slip screens, they come off of double screens. And it seemed like they get always a good look out of an out-of-bounds play. Marcus Hammond and Van Allen Lubin check back in for Notre Dame. Lubin had four points in that first half. Hammond kept off the scoreboard in his nine minutes of play. Ryan, offensive rebound. Quick to the hoop is Cormac Ryan. You just got to love Cormac Ryan because he does all the little things. Rebounds, defends, makes great decisions and has been shooting it so well. He is in a zone right now at both ends of the floor. Notre Dame on a 16 to two run. It'll be stopped a little bit by Anthony Morales. Notre Dame got caught in a switch out there, big on the guard, and again, Boston University well coached. They recognized it, they went right to him inside. Wirtz has it blocked from behind by Brewster. I think he was really looking to try to make a pass, Nate Lusheski, but uh, when it was not there, he started to take it to the rim, got deflected. Out of bounds play again. Going back to Trey Wirtz, this season has yeah. just brought so much more confidence. He's really stepped up in the absence. You look at the offseason, Notre Dame lost guards Blake Wesley and Prentice Hub, and in steps Trey Wirtz, and he's taken on such an expanded role. And that's really what you want from your upperclassmen to do, do those type of things. 
you know, play with confidence. And that's been something that he has brought to the table. Wirtz with two on the shot clock from deep, drains it. Wow. Way downtown, Trey Wirtz. Wow, that was a deadly shot there. My goodness, he just had to pull up. And you know, that was one of those daggers where Boston University plays so well defensively. And then boom, he knocks down a three. You look at this shot here. I mean, he shoots it from deep, but he doesn't really even look at the rim. He's got to catch it here. He's got a defender, a long, lanky defender on. He just catches. Look at the quick release he has there. And that gives him an opportunity to pull it deep. And that was a big bucket again for the Irish as they are on that three point line matchup. And they're, they're well beyond uh, their goal of 10. Trey Wirtz must have been disappointed with the box score at halftime. He only uh -huh. had two points in the first half, and then an offensive explosion so far in the second half with 12 points for Trey Wirtz. Now he's up to 14 total. Notre Dame has got to have a variety of people that can score for him this year. And that's exactly, you know, the, the right sauce for them to be successful. J.J. Starling with a great closeout to alter the shot from Walter White. Got numbers on the break. Going to come back and set it up. Good decision by the freshman guard. Got Starling, it. beautiful dish inside. Ben Allen Lubin takes care of it from there. And if you look at a point guard, you can look at a lot of things, but Notre Dame freshman point guard loves to pass the ball. He's just not thinking about scoring. He loves to distribute the ball. Harper has it in the wing, drives inside on Starling, will be fouled. Notre Dame has done a great job defensively on Harper. They've done a great job of containing him and making every shot attempt hard. Well, coming into the night, Jonas Harper was averaging 18 points over his last two games. Yeah, he hasn't had very many looks at all. Harper can shoot it from three, is really dangerous, leads the team in threes entering tonight. His teammate Walter White working strong against Nate Leshetsky, has to throw it up. Malcolm Chimezzi with a beautiful effort underneath, and he'll finish it off. Got a great opportunity tonight to play, and uh, you dug that one loose, got a loose ball, went right to the rim, which you should do underneath the basket. And Malcolm Chimezzi, one of the younger players in this rotation, he's a sophomore and made his first career start tonight. Yeah, you know, this is an old team on both sides. We said that before, and then as a sophomore, that's unusual to get one of those guys out there on the floor tonight. From 13-point lead and a big reason why the <laughs> offensive explosion from Trey Wirtz and Cormac Ryan. You can't shoot better from three. No, no, you can't. That's a video game right there. Look at that. You know, you're, if you're looking at the stat sheet over there at Boston University, you're thinking, uh, how do you defend that? They're not missing. Dane Goodwin cashes in from the charity stripe. You know, Dane Goodwin has done so many great things for Notre Dame. Uh, he is a son of a coach, and that makes so much difference. He's always thinking on the floor. You've got to have those guys constantly thinking on the floor. As he misses a free throw that I saw his dad kind of wince on. You see the stat line from Goodwin tonight. Kept off the scoreboard a little bit to his standards. Only six points for Goodwin. But those are the things that really make the Irish difficult to guard because there are so many different weapons. And if you can shoot the three, it really creates problems for your defense. Baseball pass up ahead to Trey Wirtz, who will lay it in for point number 16 on the night. Unusual to get a breakout transition, but Boston went hard to the offensive boards. Long rebounds, long shots, long rebounds, long opportunities to score. When you talk about all those scoring threats from Notre Dame, their entire starting lineup averages double digits. They're one of only four Power Five teams across the country to have that to their name. Yes, you know, and that's going to have to be the formula for Notre Dame if they're going to be successful in the ACC. They're going to have to hit on all cylinders all the time. And they kind of got a glimpse of what happens when they played Syracuse, and that didn't happen. Uh, you know, they were, they were stagnant offensively. They just can't have that happen. They game in, game out to be successful in the league with so many great teams in the ACC. And Mike Gray said to us today, his team is resilient. They're coming off a loss against Syracuse, a, a tough one at home. You lose by one point. 
but they haven't lost back-to-back -back games in over a year when they lost back-to-back -to, -back to Illinois and Boston College in the beginning of December of 2021. Well, you know, he does a great job of getting his guys to bounce back. Great attack there at the rim. But he really does a great job. He doesn't allow them to sulk and feel bad about it. He gets them right back. They were able to have a great practice on Monday. And, uh, you know, they finally got some guys healthy, so you can actually get five on five. And like he said, I don't have to have a fake practice. Well, Marcus Hammond looks pretty healthy on that drive as he makes his first basket of the night. And that's always a great sign where you can get knocked down after having an injured knee, you come back and get knocked down. It's like a football player. You get knocked down, get back up. Now you can get back in the game. Hammond, a grad transfer from Niagara where he was a three times all max selection and on the other end jonas harper getting on the scoreboard with that three that's his first basket of the night harper second leading scorer averaging just under 12 points a game has really been held in check tonight by the irish yeah the irish have done a really good job of knowing he is at all times it's been a frustrating night that was really his actually his first really good look words misses his first three-pointer of the he, night he missed Frameworks also becoming kind of the floor general of this team. He leads Notre Dame with just over four assists a game. Again, this is a critical time for Boston University. We have seen how they responded when they got down early. They cut it back down to seven. Eventually, you know, got back in the ball game. Now they're in that same spot here with 927. We'll see how they respond and see if they got the energy to dig themselves out of this hole, get back in the game. You can see how Trey Wirtz has flipped his script tonight. And Trey Wirtz started the season off with three straight, three straight games with double-digit scoring. Since then, hasn't been in double digits, but gets the opportunity tonight to totally rewrite that and maybe set a new season high of points. Yes, they, I mean, he, he could do a lot of good things for the Irish. He's needed to continue to make good decisions as a point guard. But if he can shoot as well, he's going to be on the floor a lot for the Irish. The Boston University is physical. They really post up hard. Cormac Ryan has had a battle down there. Nate Lyshevsky has got some battle because Boston U is playing really, really physical down on the block. They, they post up strong. They want the ball down there. And really, Notre Dame has done a solid job of defending those guys on the block. These guards of the Terriers are really physical, as you mentioned, and they play with a lot of length. A lot of them 6'5", six, 6'7", six, yeah. even, playing yeah. kind of a guard-forward hybrid role. And, you know, people laugh, but there's such a thing as old man strength. Because they're older, they do have a lot of strength. Lashetsky held underneath by Harper. Again, when you're trying to match up with the Irish and that team that switches, that's going to be a situation where they're going to look for Nate Vyshevsky on, on that switch. He goes right down to the block, posts up strong. He has an advantage there. Ryan looks for a screen. Starling fakes the jump shot, drives in. Off with the right hand, lays it in. My goodness. He just has the instinct of finishing around the basket as a freshman. Great defense again by Cormac Ryan taking away the post. Devin Zane cross court pass, find Watts. Watts just left it short. Again, a rare miss by him as well. You know, Coach Bray talked about how he needed to have a great practice and get everybody connected in practice because he's really tried to protect his team as they've dealt with injuries. And now he's got more of his guys to get back in the lineup. And he's got more guys to practice. The foul will be on the floor, it looks like. Yeah. Well, maybe not. Boston University now in the bonus so JJ Starling shooting one and one Starling up to 12 points on the night now 
The staff was so excited when he committed to Notre Dame, and you can see why. He, he's all that you've been advertised as a, as a player. He has done all the things that you need to do to step in at the point guard at Notre Dame. Well, the ACC has some of the best freshmen in the country, and J.J. Starling is up there with him. He's third in scoring. He leads all of them in shooting percentage as well, so he's been extremely efficient as a freshman. There's a big time three from Caitlin Jones, yeah, who came, recently checked in. Came off a nice double screen there, a great set, great look, and the shooter knew that, hey, I'm gonna come off this look in the fire, and he did. Jones can shoot it, he shot 37, 37% from three a season ago. He's a junior from Los Angeles, California. Good win. Lost his footing for a second, dishes it off to Ryan. One more pass to Leshetsky, who underneath got poked in the eye and is down. For now, we'll be headed to break. We'll be back to check on Nate Leshetsky, but Notre Dame right now has a 13-point advance taken to the locker room, and we'll take a look at that last foul, yeah. Coach. You know, first thing I thought was he got poked in the eye, but I think if you look at it closely, he may have gotten hit square on the nose, and that may have, uh, you know, that's a concern because that's more where the concussion issues come about. Here's an unusual situation in college basketball. He's going to, uh, Boston University picks who's going to shoot free throws. And so, J.J. Starling's going to go to the line. Starling says I'll take it. He's yeah. got 13 points and, and, already. And if I'm Nate Seske, I said, those should be mine. You know, just because I got hurt, shouldn't I get to shoot those free throws? I get the credit for the free throws, but that's not the way the game works. But give, give him an assist, maybe, yeah, you know, exactly. something in the score box. Yeah. So Starling, two of two from the line, now up to 15 points. And wow, good balance by the Irish. Yeah, Starling was struggling shooting in the first half a little bit, but the second half picking up, and he's been getting it done inside as well. He's only had one three, so it's been mainly him driving and finishing. Yeah, and that's his game right now. I think that he'll develop over time. He's going to develop over time, but right now he needs to just work on what his strengths are. Like he'll get to the point where he can knock in that jump shot. Terrier's got five left on the clock. And the board is controlled by Ben Allen Lubin. And Lubin, this is great minutes for him, where he's going to have to play solid the rest of the way, but to, that's what you bring him in here for, to do those type of things. Words from deep. Lubin underneath. Yeah. Got a hand on it, but looks like he went over top. Little push, little push off there, which probably didn't need to do. I think he could have rebounded that anyway. But uh, again, critical moments here in this game. If you're looking at Boston University, you've got to got got to get offensive, good looks, knocking in shots to get back, cut the lead from 15. And BU was in a situation versus UC Davis earlier this year where they found themselves down almost 30 points. And yes. they ended up forcing overtime. They did fall in that game, but this is a resilient group. Yeah, the mental toughness that they have is obvious to be down that many. And the comeback in a college game says a lot about their coaching staff, but also the grit of an old team that they have to come back. And they just didn't have enough in the overtime to, to pull it off. They're not going to quit. A veteran starting lineup for Coach Jones, consisting of three grad seniors, and then he add in a regular senior in Ethan Britton Watts, who's having himself a night. He is having some type of night. Double stagger screen here for the Irish. BU with six threes in this second half, but they're still down 12. They'll need more of that. Five on the shot clock here. Goodwin will drive against Tyne and fade away from Goodwin coming up. Doesn't get quite the roll he was looking for, but how about that? Lubin in the air finishes it off. He's got so much length that he was able to find that ball just by extending those arms and great touch to be able to catch it and finish it so quickly. Lubin, the four-star recruit out of Orlando Christian Prep, really broke on the scene this year with a double-double against St. Bonaventure. There's Nevin Zink. 
Zink is just a workhorse down low. He just battles and battles and battles. You gotta love his effort. Zink, five of six tonight from the field. He's got 10. Wirtz missed his last three three-pointers attempts now. Foul against Cormac Ryan, who wasn't pleased with the goal there. No, you know, he battled and seemed like uh, he felt he got all ball. But again, those are good things as you look at this take. He's got to drive hard to the rim. It's got to be, again, a good take there and all ball. Tynan drains the first. But again, if you're Boston University, you've got to attack the rim here. You've got to get to the free throw line. They're doing exactly what they needed. You've got to get to the free throw line. You've got to knock in threes to cut this lead. And now they have. It's back down to 10. And getting to the free throw line might be tough coming for them. This is a Notre Dame team that doesn't foul right. often. It, that's a staple of Mike Bray coach teams. They only average 10.5 fouls per game. That leads the nation. Yes. And that's every year. People have asked me so many times, how do you coach that? I, and I... I think it, mentally the guys are just smart. They just know when to protect themselves and not foul. Starling pulls up. It's been interesting with Nate Lyshevsky out of the game, how the offense is kind of stagnant a little bit. These guys are so used to playing with him involved in the game. Now you have a mismatch inside right here. The Irish only with one true big man now in the rotation without Leshetsky, so it'll be the freshman Lubin who you expect to play the rest of the way. And give credit again to Boston University. They have not given up. They're attacking the basket. They're getting to the free throw line. That stops the clock. You get extra points when you can knock in these free throws with no time going by. Fletcher, 92% free throw shooter entering tonight. He's another one of those veterans for BU. He started his last 45 games entering tonight. And a big turn of events for Boston University as they cut it down to a six point game. What a three point attempt right there from Kalen Jones. And they're fired up. Notre Dame calls a timeout. We'll be going to break. When you come back, Notre Dame's looking to hold on to a six-point. As we welcome you back, the Terriers have cut this down to a six-point lane, and the three-ball has been the catalyst. It sure has, and that was a great offensive tip out. Got a great look and knocked it in. And again, now we got a basketball game. Six points, 4.05 to go. We'll see how the Irish respond. 8-0 run for the Terriers, and you just saw the numbers flash on your screen. Ethan Britton Watts up to a career high 19 points tonight. Trey Wirtz has it, uses the Lubin screen. Irish are a little bit out of sync offensively. Ever since Nate Lisewski had to step down, but he is back on the floor, and I'm sure he'll be back in the game after a four minute break. Lisewski over there on the bench, hasn't checked in yet. Jones has it. Wow. Quick trigger. Oh, missed layup. And underneath, Nevin Zink had a good opportunity, but couldn't convert. That could have cut it, uh, wow, right down the four here. That was a big miss inside by Zink. Irish now with a chance to push the lead back up. Goodwin takes the shot, looks to drive on White. Turnaround jumper for Dane. Can't get it. Rebound pulled down by Watts. Notre Dame on a scoring drought, just over two and a half minutes now. Good Fletcher team. Tynan has his pass intercepted by Cormac Ryan. Collision at half court, and it'll be a blocking foul against Walter White, and we'll be headed to break. Stick with us. Notre Dame's got a six-point lead late. In As we welcome you back to Purcell Pavilion, the dance cam has the fans going, and we got a good finish coming up. Boston University is closing this game out. They're down six but they have the momentum right now. It's been a great run here by Boston University, getting themselves right back in the game. Two possession game, 
Cormac Ryan can make a dent here by shooting some free throws. Ryan buries the first. That was a great steal by him that uh, got the Irish the ball, got fouled. Now he's got a chance to extend that lead. Ryan playing really well defensively tonight, has four steals. And now able to get Notre Dame back up to an eight point lead. Big free throws there. 18 points for Cormac Ryan. But Notre Dame needs him to continue his defensive ability here. Boston University going inside to their strong veteran. Zink, beautiful move down low and converts off the glass. Just a great turn back to the left, left hand there. They went to him, he knew it, and he finished. Irish running some clock, but they need to make sure they get a great look. Lubin has it with 10 to shoot. Give and go with Trey Wirtz. Four seconds left, Goodwin fakes the shot. He drives now up the middle and he is fouled. Again, a great possession by Notre Dame, running it all the way down. One second on the clock. You're telling your kids, just play great defense. Don't go to the free throw line. But look at this, attack the rim, he's got to. And again, the contact draws the foul. That's just a veteran going to the line there, making a good decision. This is when that experience comes into play for Notre Dame. We mentioned this is Mike Bray's most veteran team yeah. ever. Four starters are grad students. Yeah, there's no panic. There's just no panic in any of them. They, they know what they need to do, and they know they can hit shots. And they've been involved in a lot of close <laughs> games this year. They've won every one of them except the last contest against Syracuse. And they had a shot to do that then. Good defense from Ryan. Walter White, strong to the hoop and will be headed into the charity stripe. Again, that's a big man move there. That's just strong. That just shows you the six-year veteran is just willing to attack the rim, draw the foul, and go to the free throw line. Both teams have veterans that know what they need to do late in the game. They gotta get to the free throw line, make easy shots, and that's exactly what White did there. Walter White kept pretty quiet on the night. He yes. now is up to eight points. And there's a look at the two leading scorers tonight kept under double digits. Yes. Both Connecticut natives played high school ball together at St. Luke's School and then reunited at Boston University. And they've been putting on a show all season long, but the Notre Dame guards have kept them off the scoreboard pretty yes. much what they're used to tonight. Huge possession here. Two veterans going at it down low against each other. Goodwin, his fadeaway comes up short. Worked as a pass to Cormac Ryan. Possession will stay with Notre Dame. I think they got a foul in that situation. I think Cormac Ryan might find himself at the free throw line. There will be a foul coming. Fletcher Tynan will be hit with it. So Cormac Ryan back to the free throw line. Has a chance to extend this five point lead. And if you're a youngster, if you're a high school player, just watch Cormac Ryan. He's always around the ball. You know, that was an air ball by Goodwin. Again, look who finds the ball, gets to the free throw line. He's always active. Three time team captain. He's one of those players who plays with such passion. He's yeah. described as the vocal leader, oh, not yeah. even on the court, just off the court yeah, as well. Right. Plays he's, both sides. He's the alpha dog. He's the leader of the team if you ever attend a practice where he is the alpha dog. And you got to have one of those if you're going to win. Timeout from Coach Jones and Boston University. Notre Dame has to hold on to a seven point lead. Well, here's where a lot of your offense has come tonight. It's been the scars for both of these teams. Cormac Ryan's been hot, but Ethan Britton Watts stepping up for Boston University. And again, uh, it has been both guards that have played extremely well and done so many good things offensively and defensively. These are two guard-heavy teams and they'll need their play down the stretch. Watts uses the screen from Zinks. He goes to the floater, can't get it to go. Zink will be fouled underneath. Yeah, again, you win my good guard play 
And as you get into the tournament or you get in the conference play, it's got to be your guards that carry you. Again, situation there where Zink is just relentless, relentless on the boards. He has just been so good around the basket. Big free throws coming up for Boston U. First one rims out for Nevin Zink. I would look for Boston U to press here. They need to get the ball back. If it's a make, they need to match up and go man-to-man -man press or some type of run and jump look so the Irish just don't run the clock out. Full court pressure, here we go. One out of two from the stripe for Zink. Here's the Terriers want to put the pressure on gotta Notre get, Dame. Got to get the ball inbounds. Goodwin has it stripped. Wow. Fight for the ball and it'll be a foul against Dane Goodwin. Yes. Again, Notre Dame had a very difficult time getting the ball inbounds, and that's the number one thing you've got to be able to do against full court man-to-man -man pressure. Get the ball inbounds. Walter White at the free throw line. He shoots it at about 73%. Oh, that's a big turnover by the Irish. White so far, perfect from the free throw line. Three of three tonight. Notre Dame going with five guards here against the pressure. Big screen out here. Goodwin secures the miss. Takes away the opportunity to press. So that was a huge miss by Boston. They're going to run the clock here. It's a five-point game. They've got to make something happen here. Both teams in the double bonus. The yeah, Terriers don't want to foul here, but they need a stop. Yes. Well, I think I would have fouled early in that possession, but uh, let's see how it plays out. Five on the shot clock. Wirtz has it. Step back. Didn't hit anything. Nate, Dane, Dane Goodwin came up with it underneath, but his foot was out of bounds. Notre Dame, one of their last nine field yeah. goals have fallen. They've been struggling finishing it offensively down the stretch, and now BU has a big chance only down five. And I look at Nate Lyshevsky. When he left the game, offensively, the Irish began to struggle. Britton Watts gives it off to Harper. A few passes from the Terriers offensively. Good motion offense. It's taken, and it's blocked by Lubin on the outside. Foul wow. comes. A huge defensive effort from the freshman. Now, I don't think Boston U needed a three there. They just needed a bucket, but it looked like they were all out on the perimeter. And now all of a sudden you have a long, lengthy big that can get his hands up and block that shot. That was a great defensive effort. Quite the turn of events in this game. And now Lubin has a big chance. Yes, got to make the free throws now. If you do a great job defensively, you got to finish it off by making free throws. Wow. Lubin hasn't gotten to the free throw line much this season, but has made it count when he gets there. You know, I want to go back to, you know, what happened for the Irish. They've really struggled without 14 in the game. You know, that's been a key thing. And, and he brings so many things, a mismatch. And when that mismatch is in the game, you're seeing the different Irish offense that really had to allow themselves to score from the perimeter more. And uh, that's something they didn't do a very good job of. That's something they're going to have to look at when Dave Assessman's not in the game. How are we going to find ways to hit scoring opportunities? You know, offensive struggles down the stretch from Notre Dame tonight, but luckily their free throw line shooting, you can't ask for much more no. if you're Mike Bray. They've made no. it count when they've gotten there. Yes, they really have. And let's go back and really give Boston University, you know, a tip of the hat on what they've been able to do in this game, too. They were down and out, but there's no quit in this team. And coach has got them ready to play. They are, they're doing an amazing job, and they're still in the game if they can get a miss here by the Irish. It becomes, you know, just a, just a six-point game, and it can, it's manageable. Here Leeds you go. still at six. Just about 28 seconds on the game clock here. Britton Watts has it. Notre Dame switching. Goes everything. by Wirtz. He's left open, has the shot. Back iron, Re offensive rebound is pulled down by Fletcher Tynan. He goes up with it, 
and the miss will be secured by Dane Goodwin. Now okay. Notre Dame has a chance to close it out. They did a really good job defensively there. They switched every screen. There was no easy looks, kind of a forced shot, and then uh, just didn't have an opportunity to get a very good look on the offensive rebound. You know, this could be a win-win for both teams. You got to look at it for Notre Dame. They fought through some adversity. They made some shots. But then you got to give, again, Boston University uh, a lot of credit for not giving up, battling road warriors, which they had been. They could have packed it and left, and they did not do that. It just shows a lot of grit of this old team. Well, at the beginning of the season, Coach Jones looked at these matchups on the road against UConn oh. and now Notre Dame, and he said, no matter what happens, it'll be a good test for us yes. before Patriot League play begins. Absolutely. Walter White from deep, able to cut it to a five-point game. And I think that uh, if you're a Boston youth fan, you'd like to have seen a lot more of that early, but Notre Dame did not give him those opportunities. And this one was deep here, way behind the three-point line. But again, knocks nothing but net. Back to a five-point game. Irish got to get the ball inbounds. Walter White with a quiet 13 points now, just at, about at a scoring average, so making his presence felt late in this one. But I think that uh, it's been, again, you said it very, very well, it's been a quiet 13, and if, the, if they were gonna come in here and handle the Irish, he was gonna have to have a big night. And uh, he just has been contained very well by the Irish defense. For Coach Mike Bray and Notre Dame, they've made Purcell Pavilion oh my. a difficult place to play. 20 and two over the last two seasons, and one of those losses the other day to Syracuse, the other versus Duke. So, Something. the home court advantage—it's it's been real for Notre Dame. Something magical about this place, and they just come in here expecting to take care of the home court advantage. <laughs> Another foul comes against Fletcher Tynan. Cormac Ryan will be shooting. Coach Bray leaving all of his players off the line here, matching up defensively. We got a fifth foul situation, so he's got a little time here. I think they're gonna go back and look at this. They've got a little bit close to the head and uh, maybe a bang to bang him and uh, they're just looking to make sure it wasn't a flagrant. Coach, this is the Notre Dame yeah. team. They started their season off with five straight wins and yeah. then recently one and two in their last three. And one of those wins, a huge one against Michigan State here at home. But what's kind of the recipe for success when Notre Dame enter, enters ACC play? You talked about three-point shooting. You talked about kind of having a short bench. How do they kind of put it together when those things might yeah. not be falling the as right way? Coach, as you're looking down the road, and coaches always are, players are in the moment. Coaches are looking down the road. If you look at it, they've got a rebound. And if you look in the ACC, the great length of the ACC is something that uh, is going to be constantly a challenge for, for Notre Dame. But they need to be able to be productive on the boards, in the past, they found a way to do it, so they've got to hit 10 to 12 threes, and they got to win the battle on the boards to be effective in the ACC. Well, Nate Leshetsky, before he left this contest, had nine points and nine rebounds, just shy of a double-double. But he's been rebounding at yes. his highest rate ever this season. Yeah. And it's a good sign he's back on the bench. He looks okay. I think they just want to be cautious about things with him. Uh, got hit in the head pretty hard. Still a six-point game. BU's got a hurry. Brewster has it. Harper takes the shot. Had a good look. And this one will finish off. Notre Dame 81, Boston University 75. Coach, how did Notre Dame do this one tonight? Hey, thank you very much. It was a great game, great finish. Uh, hey, have a great break. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. A great victory for Notre Dame tonight over the Terriers. Thank you for joining us here tonight from Purcell Pavilion for my broadcast partner, Coach Light, Mike, 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 uh, Mike Lightfoot, producer Sterling Truitt, director Derek Coleman, and everyone involved in the production of this one. This was a fun one from South Bend. I'm Patrick Hartnett saying so long and thanks for joining us. Your final score, Notre Dame 81, Boston University 75. I missed you. Oh.
He's a complete package for the Irish, and that's what you want from your fifth-year senior. What a leader. 16 points and a season-high nine rebounds in that loss to Syracuse for Dane Goodwin. And then on the other side for Boston University, Coach, they're in the midst of a seven-game road trip. Wow. They're two and three on it so far, but a big opportunity tonight to get a big win against a good Notre Dame team. Yeah, they're really excited to be here to play it play at Notre Dame and again they have been on a long road trip we'll see what the effects of that has in tonight's game fourth meeting all time between these two schools Notre Dame owns it at 3-0 in those games Notre Dame in their home white. Boston University away scarlet jerseys. And here we go. BU will start with possession in the hands of the senior guard, Ethan Britton Watts. Yeah, watch, watch. He's done a great job. A sixth year player for Boston University. Watts lobs it up to Malcolm Chemezi, who is making his first career start tonight. And that shot just off the mark. Tip that a bounce. And it looks like possession will favor Notre Dame. Watson U picking up full court here, man to man. And uh, they will play strictly man to man for the most part. Cormac Ryan uses the screen from Nate Leshetsky. Now the freshman JJ Starling has possession. You can see Notre Dame, a team that's very talented. You just saw the starting lineup, and it's made up of four graduate students and then J.J. Starling, the freshman, to go along with it. Great interior defense there by the post player. Two left on the timer. Cormac has to force it. If you want to set a tone, that first possession as a coach is very, very important, and that's exactly what you, know, you saw at Boston University there. They dug in, they played great defense, and they forced Iris to take a tough shot. Notre Dame, a team that doesn't turn it over much. They're best in the nation, only allowing, averaging, excuse me, 8.9 turnovers per game. As you take a look at the starting five for BU, they're led by two graduate students in Walter White and Jonas Harper, 15 and five, both average double digits a contest. That's what I'm talking about. There we go, there we go. Boston University likes to switch a lot on the perimeter, four out, one in. See if Notre Dame could take advantage of that, especially inside. Leshetsky, ball fake, tries to drive on the sophomore Chemezi. He's working hard downstairs, and he puts it in off the glass. Notre Dame starts the scoring tonight. Great footwork, great footwork inside. And if you're big, that's something you really want to have is great footwork, great balance as you get banged around in there. You don't travel. Nate Leshetsky, leading scorer on this Irish team, averaging 15 points a contest. And the three ball goes on the other end for Britton Watts. 